The paintbrush tool is another one of GIMP's drawing tools. It works almost exactly the same as the pencil tool, but it helps give you a softer edge along your uh, brush strokes. Let's take a look at how it works. Like with all the other drawing tools, it's got a mode. Uh, when you've got it set to normal, it just draws over the image with no regard for what, the, uh, what it's drawing over. But these other settings allow you to have the line that you're drawing um, be dynamically affected by what you are drawing over. I'm not going to go over what these all do, but you should definitely play around with them. They can really help uh, make your images uh, look better. They can help you integrate what you're currently drawing with your image uh, better from the beginning. The opacity slider obviously just uh, sets the opacity of the line that you're drawing at 100%. It will be fully solid, and if you turn it down uh, lower, it will be uh, semi-transparent. Okay, we'll just undo those. Then we have the brush option. This lets you choose your brush. In this case, we've got this sort of soft circular brush chosen, uh, so we can see it's got a nice soft edge. Oh, well, let me just turn the opacity back up. It's got a nice soft edge along it. We can also make our own brushes. Um, if we go over to the brush menu here, which is uh, generally uh, located below the layers in this, this panel, but we can also get to that by opening, clicking here and clicking on the open brush selection dialog box, which will open it over here, at which point we can right click in here and we can click new brush and we can now build a custom brush using these parameters. A starting shape, a radius, um, some of these spikes which will actually uh, give it sort of, when it's totally round, it is uh, not obvious what it's doing, but when you apply an aspect ratio you'll see that the spikes actually give it sort of a, uh, a star shape. Um, so we can build custom brushes like that. Pretty cool. We can undo this. Then we've got the size. This obviously changes the size of the brush. We can make it really big. Or we can turn it way down to just one. and You can barely see it. We've got the aspect ratio. This changes the width to height of the brush. So uh, let's turn the size back up so we can see it. And we'll get... oh. That's actually not affecting this brush. So let's switch back to just a round brush here. We'll just undo these so we've got... And so now even though we've got a round brush selected, it actually comes out as an oval because we've turned up the aspect ratio. We can also hit these uh, refer revert to default buttons next to the sliders to send them back to what they were. So we can hit that and it goes back to a round aspect ratio. Now the angle changes the angle of the shape if it's round, it won't have an effect, so let me turn up the aspect ratio again. And now we've got this oval that's on its side. We can turn it up more, and the slant becomes even more pronounced. So let's undo this, and we'll revert these back. We've got the Dynamics option. This allows you to change uh, what is being drawn based on how you are drawing it. It's set to off right now, but we can go click on this button, and we can select from a number of uh, pre-made dynamic setting options or we can build our own. In this case I've been playing around with building my own. I've called it my DIN and I'll just select it here. If we click on this edit button we'll be able to see what exactly it is. It brings up this panel which shows you what effects is being had on the drawing and uh, what method is affecting it. Some of these you will not be able to use with just a mouse. You need to have a stylus like pressure, uh, but the mouse can have some effects. So right now you can see that the color is being affected by the velocity at which we're drawing, and the size is being affected by the fade, which I'll show you in a second. Let's just move this off to the side. Now under the dynamics options we've got the fade option. So we've got the fade is being affected by, uh, or the size is being affected by the fade. So we can set the fade options here. Right now we've got a fade length of 282 pixels. So if I were to start drawing, you'll see that it fades in over the course of 282 pixels. 
Now it's got a repeat option. In this case, I've got the sawtooth wave uh, selected. So when it gets to the end, it just simply starts over from the beginning. But if we wanted to, we could set it to none, in which case it would just stay at that full width once it reached it. Or we could set it to the triangular wave, in which case it would sort of fade in and then fade back out and then back in. So none, we'll set that to none. And then we can also reverse it if we want it to fade out instead of fade in. And then we've got the color options. So because the color is being affected by how fast we draw, it's using this gradient here, which you can select any gradient you want. And if you want more information about gradients, you can see the blend tool video. Um, so if I'm drawing slowly, you'll see that it draws green. And if I draw quickly, you'll see that, well, let's actually turn the fade off so we can see that. You'll see that it turns uh, to that purple on the other end of the gradient. Okay, so then we've got a few more options. Let's turn the dynamics just to off here. And then we will close that window. We've got the uh, apply jitter option. This basically just applies sort of a random speckling to your brush stroke. So instead of a straight line, it, it adds uh, a bit of lumpiness to it. Right now it's fairly low, but you can see that it doesn't draw a straight line, despite the fact that I drew it pretty straight with the mouse. But then if we turn it way up, we'll see it very much pronounced. It's almost just a random speckling on the page. So maybe somewhere in between. Let's just clear this canvas here. And you can see that we're sort of drawing a line, but it's just a number of speckles along the way. And maybe. So. Uh, and then finally we've got, well, we've got the smooth stroke. This allows you to uh, smooth out your stroke. This can help make drawing with the mouse a little bit smoother. So right now if I'm just drawing, well, let's turn it off. And if I'm drawing, and you can see it's quite shaky because I'm shaking the mouse. And if I were to apply the smooth stroke, and we turn these up quite a bit, they work sort of uh, complementary to one another to smooth out your stroke. And now, even though you can't see it, I'm actually uh, wobbling the mouse quite a bit as I'm drawing these lines. So it helps smooth them out. And then finally, we've got the incremental option. This affects the, uh, the opacity at which you're drawing. So if you've got it set to 100, this won't have any effect. But normally when you're drawing and you've got the opacity turned down, say to 20%, and we draw over this, you'll see that well, let's turn it up a smidge more, um, and we'll start over. You'll see that no matter how many times I draw over itself, the opacity doesn't change until I actually let go of the mouse and start drawing again. But with the incremental option set, it is continuously uh, building up layers of what I'm drawing on top of itself. So if you have the opacity set uh, fairly high, uh, it'll very quickly become completely opaque. So this tool really works best when you've got the opacity set quite low. So we can set it to, say, 5%. And you can just sort of draw in circles over and over again without letting go of the mouse, and it will just darken like so. This is a great way to uh, create a soft edge for a very uh, irregular shaped object or if you want to just if you want certain areas to be darker than others. So those are the basics of the paintbrush tool. Like I said, it functions very similarly to the pencil tool except that it gives you some nice soft edges along your brush stroke.